Hello everybody, this is Rodrigo Diaz from the Cisco Security Solutions team and today I will guide you through what you can achieve with ice 303 as the Kax server as well as some useful troubleshooting tips. The first thing that you need to check is if the ice policy service node from where you will be forwarding TACAX requests has the feature device admin enabled as you can see in this page. In case you do not have such feature displayed from this menu select the node, edit it, and under the section pertaining policy service enable the device admin service. After confirming that the feature is enabled on ICE GUI, it is a lie if you issue the command show port alluding to the TCP port used by TACAX, you need to get an output like the one that is displayed. The next point is to review the network access device configuration with a nice where you need to have the TACAX feature enabled properly. Browse through the menu display and allocate the network access device that you are reviewing. Select it and scroll down to review if the TACAX authentication settings is enabled properly with the shared secret key that needs to be configured on the device itself. This video is based on router running Cisco iOS version. In any case, please refer to the platform or product that you want to integrate with ICE through TACAX protocol. You can have to review that the device itself has the AAA services for TACAX enabled, which are authentication, authorization, and accounting. As you can see in this console with the command show running config AAA. Once you have reviewed and implemented your configuration pertaining to the network access device you are working on, to verify the attempts of communication you need to analyze the TACAX live logs that you can be reviewing through the menu operation TACAX live logs. In this menu you must see live logs of authentication and authorization. In case you do not see any output related to live logs, review if the login of ICE is working as expected as the logs could be generated but not displayed in the dashboards accordingly. You can review the video title, ICE messaging service and Q-Link errors from this channel to investigate further the behavior. The way in which the device is going to generate TACAX traffic is through the login and the access to the device itself. However, you can generate traffic on Cisco iOS with the command test replay a group as it is displayed in this console. Use it as in the example with the username test with password test to confirm that traffic is being sent to the node. Other way in which you can verify if ICE is ingesting TACAX information from your device is to take a packet capture in the menu show. Select the capture and proceed to edit it with the IP of the network access device and the other custom values. Once the capture is set and running, proceed to generate TACAX traffic from the device. Stop the capture. Download it and proceed with the analysis. While configuring the TACAX in the network access device, it is recommended that you have full accessibility to the device and the ICE server to perform an efficient troubleshooting. As per what you can see in this console, after applying the command triple A authorization config commands the console from where the configuration was being done became unaccessible. It is important to review the reason of the failure as there are policies configured on ICE that can give administrator the privilege for configuration in the device. As per the live log shown in this section, what you can see is that the user from where the router was being configured by default is a sync, which is not allocated as a user valid within the identities on ICE. Hence, to overcome this situation, you proceed to login with a user that has full privileges as per the rules that you have configured on ICE. Another common scenario is when a specific user does not have to issue specific commands. For this case, user 1 only needs to be able to issue show commands. If you log in the same router of testing with user 1, 
you are able to enter the configure terminal command, which is not allowed. By checking the rules on ICE, you have to create a set of new rules on ICE, so this user one can only issue show commands. First, you need to configure a command set specifically for operator users, so you can configure it as the example suggests. Lastly, this configuration done is merged in an authorization rule on ICE, where it can be indicated that the users who belong to group operators can be using this rule configured. Once this rule is in place, you can verify the configuration by accessing with user1 to the router. In a last point, you can take the box on the PSN node from where the authentication is taking place, enable the component runtime to debug level, and proceed to analyze the behavior. You can review the video name How to Enable Debox on Ice3.x version of this channel to get further insight of how to proceed with this point. Thanks for the time you took to watch this video.